Mm. <clears throat> Last time we started um, proving or at least formulated um, the theorem uh, that will lead to computation of cohomology of line bundles on projective space. Mm. So let me uh, repeat this uh, theorem. Mm. The proposition. Um, that uh, um, the cohomology uh, of the structure sheaf uh, of the punctured uh, affine space uh, with 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 in the structure sheaf, um, they uh, um, vanish for i uh, not 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 zero or n minus one um and um if n minus one is zero uh we have punctured a fine line so then we know it's a fine uh, mm, so the zero of cohomology of uh the puncture the fine line uh is just polynomials uh in one one variable, Laurent polynomial in one variable, um, and uh, there is no higher cohomology. Uh, and uh, in for, for, for n bigger than uh, than one, uh, the zeroth cohomology of the punctured space uh, is just the ring of polynomials. Mm. Uh, that's clear uh, if n is bigger than one, uh, and uh, the n minus first cohomology uh, is just uh, mm, polynomials in uh, in the in, in inverse where mm, inverse variables. Uh, so maybe I write uh, x uh, one uh, inverse. So on x and inverse polynomials of uh, x one inverse and so on x and inverse. Mm. Okay, uh, so so all the degrees must be strictly negative. That's the meaning of this, uh, and uh, mm, that's it. Uh, it is also the same as uh, the nth cohomology. Uh, with supports at the origin uh, of the affine space with the coefficients in the structure sheet. Uh, okay, and then uh, th there is no uh, other uh, cohomology with support, only nth cohomology, so called purity, Grothendieck purity theorem. Uh, so we'll prove this uh, uh, soon, but uh, uh, as I see, uh, Altan, well, not quite C Altan, but guess that he is here. Uh, let me uh, interrupt uh, the smooth um, uh, movement of the lecture uh, and uh, answer his question from from the last time. Uh, about traces. Uh, so I said last time uh, that uh, it is related to relative mm, duality, and uh, I just want, want to write it down now. Uh, so we have a morphism f uh, from x to y algebraic varieties, uh, and we have uh, f a coherent sheaf uh, on x. Uh, that yeah, this morphism must be. Uh, proper or projective uh, uh, and then we will prove uh, maybe uh, in a week uh, that under the, these circumstances uh, all the higher direct images uh, of this coherent sheaf um, are also coherent well it's so-called derived coherent category but all the cohomology are coherent 
Uh, okay. And um, now this relative shared duality says that um, mm, the inner home, uh, but again, I should everywhere take the right functors, uh, whatever it means. Uh, so from the full direct image uh, of F uh, to the dualizing sheaf of Y uh, is the same as uh, the full direct uh, image of the uh, derived inner home from uh, F to uh, dualizing sheaf on X. Well, let's say that uh, X and Y are smooth, for example, but in fact, those dualizing sheaves are very, very general. They exist always. They're not necessarily sheaves. Maybe they're complex of sheaves, but uh, mm, let me write these dualizing sheaves and they're uh, invertible. Uh, if X and Y are smooth. Um, okay, mm, so, um, well, th this is the, the some canonical isomorphism, uh, the statement of uh, relative Cartier duality. Uh, and now uh, assume that X and Y are smooth projective curves. Uh, and um, F is dominant, uh, and uh, say F is locally free, that is torsion free, uh, and then there, there, there are no uh, higher direct uh, images or high, higher uh, uh, inner homes, uh, so, so we just write the, the uh, homomorphisms from um, the push forward of F into uh, the dualizing sheaf of the base curve uh, is canonically isomorphic to the push forward of the um, inner uh, home uh, from F to uh, dualizing sheaf of X. Uh, and uh, well, this inner home is nothing but uh, just the dual of F tensor omega X. So this is all uh, very clear, I hope. Uh, at least the statement of the problem. Uh, that I mean, the statement of this relative third duality uh, is clear in, in, in this particular case uh, when there are no higher direct images. Uh, and um, well, in, in order to construct the, this homomorphism, you, you need, uh, well, you start to construct. Maybe let me write some morphism here. Uh, well, let's say S. Monor of Ser. Uh, we need um, mm, the trace morphism from uh, the push forward of uh, omega uh, x uh, to omega y. Mm, okay. It, it's like uh, uh, it's a, it's a relative dimension zero. You say you see dominant morphism from one curve to another curve. A relative dimension is zero. But if relative dimension was one, like for for curves, uh, then it's similar uh, uh, to the isomorphism uh, from first homology of any curve. Mm, see, okay, you can see the dualizing sheaf with the uh, ground field case. Okay, so you somehow you, you need to com compute the direct image of the dualizing sheep first. If you compute this, uh, then uh, uh, you can formulate uh, the third duality statement. Uh, it, it needs a separate proof, but even to formulate what, what you want to, to have such a morphism S, you need this trace morphism. Otherwise, there is nothing to talk about. Okay, so that, I don't claim I provide a proof of this third duality even for curves, uh, but at least this to trace morphism makes it possible to state the self duality. Okay, so this was an aside. Uh, now we come back to this proposition um, in the first uh, part of the pa page, uh, but we move to the next page, unfortunately. Uh, 
So maybe let, let's see once again what, what is claimed that there are there are only two cohomology: zero cohomology, which is evident, uh, and uh, n minus first cohomology, uh, which is as, as I stated. Mm, okay. So. Mm, so. Uh, of the proposition. Um, we will use uh, some evident uh, short exact sequence, N namely, um, uh, we have uh, a n, um, say without zero, but it contains uh, an open subset uh, d x1. Okay, so this is just a uh, and without the whole hyperplane, okay, where x1 vanishes. Mm, okay, uh, and um, mm, uh, so so we'll we'll have the exact sequence. Uh, zero goes to uh, the structure sheaf of uh, the punctured affine space. Uh, goes to mm, the push pull uh, of the of this structure sheaf. Uh, so yeah, so so well, J, J is the open embedding uh, from D X1 into uh, A N uh, punctured. And no, no this J, J is a, a, an affine embedding, open affine. Uh, well, if we didn't, if we wouldn't puncture uh, the affine space, then there will be no no question at all. But uh, the question is local, uh, and the locally you don't see this puncture. Mm, okay, so, so there is this uh, embedding, uh, and in the uh, quotient you you get the direct sum over mm, mm, over all uh, uh, say integers. E, uh, strictly uh, negative. Uh, and again, what yes. was your argument? You said that uh, it is fine as uh, locally we don't see uh, uh, this function. But, the, the, uh, being fine is a local question. Uh, and, and locally around any point, uh, it is just uh, as an embedding of uh, AN without hyperplane into AN. Yeah? And there is no point zero. Zero is removed. Uh, at, uh, around any other point, it's just the usual uh, fine embedding, right? But uh, I, I would say that uh, around any point, it's uh, an embedding of a n in, into itself, like <laughs> locally or uh, or. Mm. Uh, mm. So you take any point here, mm, uh, point mm, a, for example, yeah, and in mm, in an open neighborhood u uh, of a uh, the embedding uh, mm, of the x1 intersect u into u uh, is a fine yeah and, and that's most clear right uh, okay because just uh, from the, the first glance i, I thought that uh... Just uh, you always have that locally uh, you, you can cover uh, each manifold with a fine chart, each variety, and uh, the more. Yeah, yeah. Would... yeah, that's true. Yeah. Okay. So you 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 covered by by those U's and in any U it's fine. But uh, it seems that this argument could be applied in any for, for any morphism because. Uh, a, any variety is covered with affine, affine charts and uh, locally. Yeah, but say if you are if we are speaking of uh, the plane without a point, without the origin, yeah, then in in in, in no neighborhood of the origin it will be a fine. This open embedding from punctured plane into plane uh, is not a fine in in any neighborhood of the origin. Okay. Mm. Uh, so uh, uh, roughly, uh, an open an open affine embedding means that the uh, complement is of codimension one. It's not not uh, well. It's not a theorem, but it's a, the first rough estimate. It has the complement has to be of codimension one. 
Uh, okay, so uh, mm, yeah, only I'm sorry because we'll uh, use a uh, the in inductive argument. Uh, maybe it's better to call this coordinate not the first but the last one. Uh, like this, like this, uh, and then uh, in in the quotient you get uh, the direct sum of um, uh, structure sheaf of uh, the smaller puncture defined space times xn to uh, the power p, like this. Mm, okay. А как устроено насечение вот этой точной последовательности? Well, it's it's like I don't know. So if n equals uh, one, then it will be uh, polynomials uh, in x one uh, embedded into um, Laurent polynomials in x one. Uh, and then in the quotient you will have um, well, x1 inverse poly polynomials in x1 inverse. Первое это вложение, да, полинома Ларана, а следующая стрелка это что будет? The quotient map, I don't understand. Спасибо. Yeah, I, I hope it's clear. Uh, and, and then you just tensor it with uh, polynomials in n, n, n minus one variable. Okay. Mm, fine. So, um, mm, so what do we uh, what do we see mm, that um, mm, that the, the middle uh, guy mm, uh, the middle shift uh, j j o um has no uh higher homology uh since um mm, the uh hyperplane complement is a fine okay uh, so well if cohomology is just the cohomology of this hyperplane complement and uh it's a fine so there's no higher cohomology and the uh, zero cohomology are, are, are just polynomials in n minus one variables, tensor Laurent polynomials in the last variable. Um, so uh, now we we're, well, we're, we're, we're proving this um, proposition, and B is obvious. Uh, it's sort of base of the induction. Uh, and now we're proceeding to, by induction, to n equals two. Uh, okay. Inductively, um, given uh, proposition, well, well, having proved for n equals one, uh, move on to n equals two, um, and then. We have the corresponding long sequence of cohomology. Uh, so what does it say? Uh, it says um, the global sections uh, of the punctured plane uh, oh, with given structure she structure sheaf. Uh, then we go to uh, the um, polynomials in X1 and uh, Laurent polynomials in X2. Uh, th then we go to um, Mm, the uh, sum over negative p uh, Laurent polynomials in x1 uh, times uh, x2 to this strictly negative degree. Uh, and then we go to the first cohomology uh, of the punctured plane. Uh, and, mm, and this is it. Because uh, the next uh, thing will be first cohomology of our basic open affine set uh, th that vanishes. Okay, so th that's what we have. Oh, sorry. Yeah, it's it my my stupidity. Uh, yeah, sorry. 
uh, yeah, and before we had direct sum. Sorry, uh, and. Um, Mm. Uh, and also, I have a question. So, yeah. so you write that uh, just uh, this exact sequence when n equals one, yes? Uh, uh, well, now for n equals two, rather. Yeah, I understand. Uh, but uh, it's previous, uh, you just wrote this O to k of no. x1 to k to the run polynomials. Yes? Uh -huh. And then, and uh, why is it so? Because. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Sorry, I, I how miss your point. Uh, so what's what's unclear? Uh, the, the... Because uh, I thought that go... so what is written here is a global section. Well, first, H zero goes to H zero, goes to H zero, and then goes to H one. So yeah. which H zero is unclear? Uh, here, the, uh, the first one is unclear. Uh, even th th this uh, this is just polynomials in X one X two, right? My question is some, uh, about what Sergey asked. Uh, this uh, yeah. for n equals one, uh, you have uh, you, you wrote this exact exact triple uh, oh, zero. No, it, it, the, 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 this uh, short exact sequence of sheets yes. is valid for arbitrary n. Yeah, there, there's no specific of. I understand. Uh, just you wrote an, an example. Yes, for n equals one. How it is? Uh, okay. Yes, certainly. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. There was only one variable x one, and now yeah. the have two variables one x two, and and so what? Uh, but even for n equals one, uh, I don't understand because uh, I think global sections of punctures the fine line uh, are uh, all around polynomials. But you wrote it as if it is uh, as uh, just usual polynomials. Uh, so we. Yeah. Ah, sorry. So here, in, in the middle, yeah, that's what that's what you dispute, uh, right? Mm. I dispute what is uh, on the left, uh, yeah, on the, mi uh, but in here, the middle. But here, n equals one. Yeah, for, he for n equals yes, one. Yes, for n equals one. Uh, yes. Again, maybe that's my idealism. Uh, so, so what do we get? Uh, in, indeed. Uh, I think here we, we get not, nothing. Around... Yeah, I think we get nothing at all. I think here we have Laurent polynomials, goes to Laurent polynomials and goes to zero. Yeah, it goes to nowhere. Yeah, yeah, right, right. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, goes to zero. Yeah, so sorry, sorry. In this case, there was nothing to consider, nothing to prove. Sorry, but. Thank you. Uh, but for n equals two, there is something to consider, and here is the result. Uh, and uh, well, it proves what we what we wanted. Uh, proposition for n equals two. Uh, right? Почему because what? Three... Извините, пожалуйста, почему yes. так как малоги обнуляются дальше? Ah, right. B because. Um, Mm, say by by induction. Uh, so for um, uh, for i bigger than uh, one, no uh, ith homology. Uh, just because look at this um, sequence. Mm, in this sequence, uh, the the first sheaf uh, is. Um, is what we're discussing now. Then the, the middle sheaf is um, pushed forward from a fine, so it will have no higher cohomology. Uh, and the uh, rightmost sheaf is um, related to um, n, well, to n minus one. N minus one is one now, right? But for for one, we know that the, the, this guy is also a fine. It has no higher cohomology either, right? So the middle and the rightmost sheaves have have no higher cohomology, right? But, but then, but then from, from long exact sequence, uh, the leftmost sheaf has not cohomology in degrees higher than one, right? Uh, okay. Mm. Thank you. Uh, so so now <clears throat> let's go to uh, next case. Uh, now n is bigger than two, mm. uh, and then we have the exact sequence zero goes to uh, h one uh, over 
oh, sorry, H zero of uh, um, the punctured space uh, goes to um, polynomials in X one and so on, X n minus one and Laurent polynomials in X n. Uh, okay, uh, then goes to the direct sum all over uh, negative um, integers polynomials in uh, x1 and so on, xn minus 1 uh, times x uh, n to the power p, uh, and then goes to the first cohomology uh, of the punctured space. Uh, and then goes to zero. Mm, and uh, uh, we, we see that uh, this, um, uh, well, it's not quite boundary map, but um, let me call it alpha. Uh, so alpha is uh, on two. Mm, I, I mean, it just, it just killed uh, the, the non-negative powers, uh, and hence uh, page one of the punctured space is zero. Uh, and um, uh, for higher cohomology, uh, there is the co-boundary map. Uh, say delta uh, from i plus first uh, sorry ith cohomology uh, uh, of um, mm, or maybe again let me uh, so that this delta is here uh, so let me write the direct sum mm, the direct sum over negative integers uh, of h i times x n to the power p uh, and it's isomorphism to the i plus first cohomology uh, of the n-dimensional punctured space with coefficients in the structure sheaf and that's it. Uh, then, then by the induction we're done because we, we know the left hand side and it determines the right hand side. We're done. By induction. Okay. Uh, and now let's mm, derive uh, the corollary about cohomology of projective space. Mm. Uh, uh, so, so we consider this projection from A, uh, but maybe. Uh, now we'll take a n plus one punctured, uh, and there will be um, the multiplicative group torsor over p n. Yeah, because the p n is just uh, the quotient of uh, the initial dilation action of multiplicative group on the punctured fine space, um, and uh, this is an affine projection. Um, well, let me call it pi. Uh, pi is affine. Uh, and so we can compute co cohomology uh, of the direct images mm. in terms of well, uh, the cohomology of any sheaf upstairs. Uh, but in fact, we only need the structure sheaf, but for any sheaf, uh, this is the same as uh, uh, the I cohomology of uh, the project of space with coefficients in the push forward of this sheaf. Uh, okay, uh, and um, now we take F the uh, structure sheaf, mm. and uh, mm, uh, we, we, we know that the direct sum, oh, sorry, the direct image of the structure sheaf. Uh, 
is the direct sum over all uh, p over all integers uh, of um, the, 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 the line bundles in vertible sheaves uh, o p n twisted by p. Okay, this is just definition. Uh, I, I mean those uh, the, the the summoned uh, o p n of p uh, is the summoned direct summoned where uh, this multiplicative group uh, acts uh, by q to the power p. Mm. Okay, by the standard character to the power p. Um, fine. So mm, uh, th then, well, it was not a corollary; it was rather it proof. It's a strange, uh, strange creation. So we first prove it and then formulate the corollary. Um, so, so the corollary says that uh, the cohomology uh, of uh, uh, any line bundle on the projective space, uh, O, P, N, O, P, uh, is zero unless uh, I sorry uh, is uh, zero or uh, n. Uh, okay, but maybe let's have uh, one final look at this basic proposition. We proved that the cohomology of a structure sheaf of the punctured fine space uh, exists only degree zero or degree one less than the dimension, but one less. Then the dimension of the uh, puncture defined space is exactly the dimension of the uh, quotient project space. Uh, so that's clear. And now, um, uh, uh, if we take P uh, non negative, um, then the zeroth cohomology uh, of um, O. Twisted by p uh, is the degree. Well, maybe let me just write symmetric power instead of polynomial. Um, mm, mm, p to symmetric power of a, mm, how to say, of b star maybe, uh, where a n was v. A plus one sorry, was V. Okay. Uh, now, the next claim is that um, if uh, P is negative, uh, then uh, the um, nth cohomology uh, of uh, um, uh, how should I say this? Uh, maybe I should say this uh, a little bit differently. Uh, if it's less than uh, n, like this. Uh, um, this will be um, like uh, x1. Uh, inverse and so on, x uh, and inverse. Mm, mm, the uh, mm, well, no, but x zero inverse x and inverse. Uh, um, well. Metric uh, p oh, n minus p yeah, n minus p. Uh, sorry, uh, less than negative n. Sorry, uh, and then you have uh, you have a uh, negative n negative p like this. Mm. Uh, 
uh, and again, again, it's wrong uh, because uh, I confuse the number of variables. Uh, negative n, negative minus, uh, sorry, uh, negative n, uh, yeah, minus p. So it's uh, almost positive, yeah, minus one, like this. Yeah. And I think that uh, 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 we don't uh, need a strong inequality. Uh, strong inequality. Uh, I, th I think we do. For example, if n equals one, yeah, uh, you, you know that the um, the uh, uh, for, uh, for, 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 well, for first cohomology of O of minus one will, will be zero, right? And only starting from uh, minus two, there will be some first cohomology. And also here you have x0, x1, and so on, xn. So it gives you n plus one factors here. Uh, okay, uh, symmetric power of, mm, of v. Uh, okay, uh, and uh, what else? Mm, in particular, well, unfortunately I have to turn the page. Uh, uh, yes, yes, it was dual, I think, yeah. Uh, I mean, uh, this cohomology is dual to that. So here it's uh, just symmetric power of V. Before it was V star, now it's V. Uh, okay, uh, so in particular, uh, if you take, uh, well, recall uh, that the um, dualizing sheaf, uh, of the project space, um, and th that was the uh, top exterior power uh, of the differential sheaf, uh, and that was isomorphic to uh, O of negative n minus one. Okay. Uh, and you see that it's negative n minus one uh, plays, plays a special role here. Uh, so the mm, uh, nth cohomology of this dualizing sheaf uh, is just one dimensional. Uh, so to say, with basis uh, x0 inverse and so on, x uh, mm, n inverse. Uh, fine. Uh, and uh, Finally, the last uh, the last point D, the last point D uh, says um, that the natural pairing uh, from the zeroth cohomology uh, of uh, O uh, uh, twisted by P. Mm, so p is non-negative integer uh, with the nth cohomology uh, of uh, O twisted by mm, negative n minus one minus p uh, to the nth cohomology uh, of the n with coefficients in O twisted by negative n minus one, that is isomorphic to k. Uh, so this natural pairing is uh, perfect. Uh, okay, and this is um, an example of shared duality uh, for the projective space PM. We, we only, uh, use it here for uh, line bundles for invertible sheet. There are many, many more, uh, say, higher rank sheets on project spaces. But for line bundles, this is the complete statement of shared duality uh, for project space. Okay, uh, so there we are. Uh, and uh, now let's uh, move on to uh, some other computations, uh, and uh, one of the effective computational tools uh, will be uh, Czech cohomology. Uh, 
Mm. In fact, uh, usually uh, the cohomology of line bundled on projective uh, spaces are computed exactly via Czech um, resolution, just by Czech com com cohomology computation. Um, Mm. Uh, but, but well, I'm sorry. Maybe maybe I didn't say it explicitly that. Uh, maybe be, sorry. Before I do this, I just add one word about uh, the previous. Uh, okay. Uh, mm. So if uh, p is between mm, zero. And uh, uh, negative n minus one, then uh, all the cohomology of the twisted sheaf vanish altogether. There are no cohomology absolute. Like for example, uh, if n equals one, the cohomology of O of negative one. Vanishes at all. There are no zero cohomology, no first cohomology, nothing at all. Uh, okay. Uh, so, so when p is non-negative, then there is only the zero cohomology. Uh, when p is less than uh, minus n, then there is only the higher cohomology, nth cohomology. In in the in in between, there is no cohomology at all. Okay. Uh, sorry. And now, now let's move to Czech cohomology. Uh, computational recipe, um, and pro pro probably everybody knows this. Uh, uh, I don't know. Maybe let's take a public vote. Uh, uh, shall I recall this, or everybody knows? Uh, is there any opinion, public opinion? Okay, thanks. Um, so, um, mm, well, we have, uh, uh, in fact, any sheaf at all. Well, say a billion sheaf. Uh, on the topological space X. Uh, and um, we have a covering. Uh, this X is uh, the union of some uh opens uh, uh you, you say i uh and i goes from one to capital n uh so it's an open cover uh and uh, th th then the czech complex uh is um, uh well, it, it lives in, in non-negative degrees. Uh, it starts in degree zero, uh, and then goes to uh, degree one, and so on. Uh, and in fact, there, there, is, there is an augmentation uh, from the global sections uh, of our sheaf uh, to, to here. Uh, Okay, uh, and uh, but, but by definition, or maybe let, let's call this delta zero, delta one, and so on. Uh, so uh, mm, the nth part, by definition, uh, is the direct sum over all mm, indices, say uh, i zero less than so on, less than i n um, of global sections on the intersection. U uh, i zero intersect so on, intersect u i n with coefficients in our sheet, like this. Извините, пожалуйста, можете напомнить, как устроено вот это отображение аргументации? Just restriction. Uh, you mean this augmentation 
say, uh, Kappa, uh, Kappa just takes uh, a global section and restricts it to say, say CC0 uh, is the sum over all i from one, so from, uh, yeah, from one to n uh, of uh, gamma of ui with coefficient in f, right? So, uh, let's see, zero. Mm, so, so you take a global section and you restrict it to all those opens. That's your augmentation, right? Massimo. Massimo. Welcome. Um, okay. Uh, so, um, I have to de define this uh, differential. Mm. Delta mm, and uh, mm, well, it, it takes uh, a co chain, uh, say alpha, uh, with indices. Well, there's no, there's no okay, there's no index here, uh, but say it is beta, and there are indices here, uh, and uh, mm, say beta with index uh, i zero less than so on, less than i. Uh, n plus one uh, is uh, the sum um, over all extra indices. Uh, like this um, minus one to the power k uh, alpha with this index with this extra index omitted i zero uh, mm, less than so on less than uh, i k and this one is omitted. Mm. Let's do it uh, like this. Uh, less than so on, less than uh, i uh, and plus one. Uh, mm, okay, uh, and uh, then it's easy to see that the dif differential squared is zero, so that's that's a complex. Mm. And uh, um, we will need a technical lemma. Uh, the very stupid one uh, that in case uh, one of uh, the covering uh, spaces coincides with the whole of x, say, uh, you see the, the very first one, uh, u1 uh, one equals uh, the whole of x. Mm. The, uh, the, the complex. Uh, is uh, a cyclic. Uh, and well, to, to prove this, we will construct uh, a ch chain homotopy. So, is a uh, homotopy really trivial? Um, but maybe I should say, um, uh, well, maybe I should say the augmented chain, the augmented Shack complex, augmented. Czech complex is a cyclic. Uh, so in other words, the, the Czech um, um, complex computes the global cohomology, the, the glo global sections of X. A cyclic means exact? Uh, absolutely, yes. So, so well, zero goes to uh, um, global sections of F goes to uh, the zeroth part. Uh, goes to the first part, and so on. Uh, is um, homotopy uh, is contractible? Uh, so, so, so there is um, uh, there is uh, the map back. Here, there is delta going in this direction. There is epsilon going back. 
that contracts our complex so uh, delta epsilon plus epsilon delta will be just the identity uh, okay uh, and um, mm, well the uh, but, but, but we just define uh, uh, the epsilon zero here uh, so it uh, mm, it takes the collection of uh, alpha i's mm, just projects to to alpha one. Yeah, we need to go to global sections, right? Uh, and we know that among our covering uh, open sets u i's, the very first one is the whole of x. So in particular, the sections over there uh, are just global sections. Uh, so th th this collection of global sections goes to alpha one and it lives in the global sections like this. Uh, okay uh, and then um, epsilon n uh, over section uh, alpha uh, i zero less than so on uh, uh, less than mm, 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 how, how many do we have here? Uh, probably uh, n, uh, probably n, right? Mm, yeah, for example, yeah, I think it's true. Uh, we have n, uh, and um, mm, it is. Uh, either zero if uh, I not uh, is not one, uh, or just uh, mm, uh, alpha, or, or just re remove this first uh, mm, alpha one uh, less than so on less than I am like this. If I zero was one. Uh, okay, uh, and then you just uh, ch ch check that this is a cont contracting homotopy. Uh, fine. Mm. Uh, so now we can prove a very important. Oops, sorry, sorry. Uh, I hope nothing will be lost. Um, so now we prove an uh, important. Computational calculation proposition uh, th that um, for for quasi coherent sheaves uh, you, you can compute uh, th their cohomology using uh, Czech complex for um, for a, for a fine covering. Uh, but maybe uh, before even I formulate this proposition, sorry, uh, let me. Uh, Mention certain localization. Uh, so I mean that uh, this Czech complex uh, is actually uh, the global sections uh, of a certain um, local thing, uh, complex of sheaves uh, on X. Uh, and um, mm, th th those uh, sheaves are very, very straightforward. Uh, uh, maybe not not I. Maybe N uh, is mm, the direct sum uh, over all mm, I zero, so on, less than I N. Uh, of um, the certain push pulls uh, f. Uh, well, I should have some index of this j, uh, but uh, this will be a formidable index, so maybe I don't write it. Uh, so j um, is uh, the open embedding. Uh, 
uh, of uh, intersection of those u uh, i well u i zero intersected so on u i n into x. Uh, okay, so then uh, well it's mm, uh, banality. I didn't say any, anything clever, uh, but now let's apply it to uh, the proposition. Mm -hmm. Um, so now uh, X is um, a separable uh, algebraic variety. Mm, F a quasi coherent sheaf. Uh, and um, uh, all, all those uh, U1 and so on, U capital N. Uh, are mm, open a fine uh, sub varieties. Uh, and no, note that the Czech complex is bounded from above. Yeah, um, when we de defined Komos, we used this uh, discontinuous sections complex that was unbounded. Uh, but then in, in our actual computations, um, um, that we did so far, say for curves or for a puncture defined space or for affine varieties or for projective space, uh, you always see that uh, the cohomology are bounded. Uh, in, in fact, it's a uh, general growth index theorem that uh, the cohomology is zero in dimension bigger, in, in degree bigger than the dimension of your variety. Uh, and um, we, will, we will see this very soon. Uh, uh, and I mean, this Czech complex is, is always goes only to degrees uh, the, the number of those opens yeah, by, by definition. Uh, so we have those sub varieties, uh, and then um, the cohomology can be computed via the Czech complex. Um, of the Czech complex. Sorry, Czech complex of F. Uh, okay. Mm. Uh, so, mm. uh, so, um, Nikki, можно спросить? Yes. Yes. Um, а вот все-таки в каком отношении к гомологии Пучка относится к гомологии Чеха? Эти два понятия, они uh, как бы, что из них является более общим, или это uh, понятие, которое при некоторых условиях, которые вот в этом утверждении только лишь uh, совпадают при этих условиях, uh, или uh, какой-то из них более well, общий? Historically, um, Czech was uh, surprisingly uh, really, really from Czechoslovakia, uh, um, and uh, he studied just you usual say to, so to say singular cohomology of uh, topological spaces um, but um, like a hundred years ago th there was no consensus on definition of uh, singular cohomology and uh, Czech just uh, suggested his own version so th this was he applied it to the constant sheaf on, on a usual topological say complex variety or whatever usual topological space okay uh, but, but, but then uh, maybe like 20 years after Czech uh, and already after the Second World War, uh, the people realized that uh, cohomology mm, mm, is, well, it's somehow m m more useful to view cohomology uh, as um, a function, not of the space, but the function of, uh, of a sheaf on your space. Okay, this way, the, the argument of cohomology uh, is not some non-linear non uh, topological space, but uh, but the argument of cohomology theory is a sheaf, and the, say a sheaf of a billion groups is a rather linear object. Right? It's an object of a billion categories, uh, so an object of linear algebra. So this was a very important uh, shift of point of view. So the the, the cohomology um, works with a billion categories. 
And then there is a general machinery developed by Cartan, Lindbergh, and many others, uh, how to define and compute uh, cohomology of derived functors uh, from abelian categories. Then you need some resolutions, uh, cyclic resolutions, or discrete, uh, this, sorry, discontinuous sections resolutions, or whatever. Okay, uh, and uh, and then it was proved, like we will prove in, in a moment, uh, that in some situations uh, those two definitions might match check definition under certain circumstances, favor favorable circumstances, gives the same answer as uh, this general cohomology definition. Okay. Спасибо. А бывают ли такие ситуации, когда есть кагомологии чеха, но их нельзя представить в виде вот кагомологии пучка? Uh, uh, but well, as you see, we uh, we uh, in this in this definition we applied Czech cohomology to sheaves. Okay, originally she, uh, Czech only considered constant sheaves on a, on a usual topological space. But here I give definition for arbitrary sheaf on an arbitrary space. So the Czech cohomology is defined in full generality, but in general it gives a different answer. Okay, you, you need some lo lo local contractibility, so to say, lo local cyclicity, to make sure that the Czech recipe gives you the correct answer from general homological algebra. Okay. Спасибо. Спасибо. Welcome. Uh, so first we, we note that um, uh, um, we, we note that um, uh, this shifified mm, localized uh, Czech complex uh, is uh, exact. Uh, I mean, you have F goes to mm, zero goes to f goes to uh, this mm, chief uh, uh, complex zero of f goes to c1 of f and so on uh, so I, cl I claim that it's an exact uh, mm, complex of sheaves uh, and indeed Uh, it suffices uh, to check uh, on stocks. Uh, and uh, taking a stock at uh, some particular point x, uh, mm, we know that this x uh, is covered by some open subset. Uh, say let's say that this open subset is U1. Uh, you have to renumber it. Uh, and then, and now the question is local. Uh, and inside U1, uh, this U1 uh, is um, just uh, uh, the, the whole neighbor. Right, so locally uh, in U1, uh, U1 coincides with the whole of X. Okay, uh, so mm, mm, well, for, for, for the global sections. But by the global, I mean global on on U one. Uh, by, by the previous lemma, uh, gamma C U one uh, of this Czech complex uh, is uh, exact. Uh, 
the one with coefficients in this complex is exact. Uh, but uh, on the other hand, uh, this C uh, F uh, is uh, the localization in the sense of quasi coherent theory of uh, of this. Uh, so it's also exact. Okay, uh, so we proved uh, that the localized Czech complex is exact. Uh, fine. Uh, now, uh, the second step, uh, all the terms uh, are acyclic uh, since this intersection U, U uh, I zero intersects on U I uh, N is a fine. Почему локализация не повлияла на точность? Ah, because we, we know that for quasi-coherent sheaves uh, over affine uh, spaces, um, the global sections and uh, localization are inverse uh, exact uh, factors. Спасибо. The equivalence of categories of quasi-coherent sheaves and modules over the global sections of the, of the structure sheet. Uh, so all the terms are acyclic because um, the intersections are affine. Uh, and uh, uh, and yeah. I think that in in the statement of proposition, you also should uh, emphasize that the intersections are refined because it's. Uh, but uh, but it follows from X being a separable variety. You see, uh, we proved this a long time ago, uh, so long that you even forgot it. That on a separable variety, intersection of affines is affine. That's why you need separable separability assumption. Uh, since. is separable. Uh, okay, and uh, hence uh, the push pull uh, is exact. Uh, okay, and the cyclic. Okay, uh, so, so that's it. You have an acyclic resolution and your cohomology can be computed by an acyclic resolution. Uh, via an arbitrary. Uh, okay, uh, and th th that's a really very important uh, computational tool. Uh, uh, so we immediately, for example, uh, derive that um, um, Uh, that for any quasi coherent sheaf F, uh, the cohomology um, with coefficients F vanish uh, for I bigger than uh, the number of uh, um, the number of uh, uh, well, the number of opens in your cover. So at x equals u1 and u1 and u uh, capital N. Uh, so for example, uh, if you have um, projective space like this, uh, then um, we need uh, n plus one uh, opens to cover it, just the basic open steps.
um, and so uh, the cohomology will say. Sorry. Uh, bigger than n. With uh, given n equal to k here and sheaf vanish. Mm -hmm. And in fact, there is a general theorem mm, due to Grotendieck. Um, that if dimension of X is N, then uh, the higher cohomology, higher than, the, higher than dimension, vanish identically for any quasi coherent sheaf. Uh, uh, but, but um, uh, well, say if you work with uh, in classical topology yeah with with n dimensional uh, complex variety uh, with, i mean co 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 complex dimensional like riemann surface has dimension complex dimension 1 uh, and your sheaf is a uh, not quasi coherent but uh, constructible say constant uh, then its cohomology uh, a priori may, may live up to dimension 2n to, to twice bigger than in the coherent situation. Mm, okay. Um, uh, so so, so the, the, this theorem really is true only for quasi coherent sheets. Um, now let also derive another corollary uh, that is the QNET formula. Uh, and I even forgot, maybe we already, we already used it some point, uh, but I forgot, sorry. Um, so we have two, two, two um, separate varieties, like X uh, and Y, and two sheaves, um, F and G, uh, quasi-coherent sheaves. Uh, and now, now we take uh, just the... Um, uh, Cartesian product uh, of X and Y, uh, and uh, the ex exterior product of um, F and G. Well, that's the pullback from X of F, tensor, the pullback from Y of G. Uh, so I claim that this cohomology is isomorphic to uh, the direct sum over all p plus q equals i, uh, h p of x with coefficients in f, tensor, uh, h q of x with coefficients, oh, sorry, of y, with coefficients in g. Uh, okay, and that, that's very similar to the Kuhn formula everybody must have encountered in the classical topology for singular cohomology. Um, and uh, the proof uh, is uh, immediate. Mm. So, so we we'll take some uh, open, mm. well, maybe I, maybe I should have said that, uh, that uh, those are separable because we're going to use the Pre previous computation. Uh, mm. So we take some open covers uh, U1, uh, so on U capital N of a fine cover of X uh, and say U1 up to V capital M, a fine cover of Y. Uh, and um, mm, uh, then we have a resolution um, F external product with G uh, to um, the Czech uh, complex uh, of F external product the Czech complex of G. Uh,
uh, on x times y. Um, and uh, mm, again, uh, mm, so th th these are a cyclic, uh, is, a, is a resolution and in a cyclic resolution. Okay, but if a cyclic resolution uh, is an external tensor product, uh, and, and then just it follows, uh, I don't know, <laughs> uh, by basically linear algebra as uh, the proof of Kuhn's formula for singular cohomology. Okay. Mm. And, um, mm, well, I don't know. Uh, and the next. The next, next topic will be uh, some f f finite mass theorems that I announced long ago. Uh, so let's, let, let me formulate this theorem. Mm. Well, we'll start from the absolute version and, and then uh, next time we'll formulate and prove uh, the rel relative version that the higher direct images of, um, of our coherent sheaves under proper or projective morphisms are again coherent sheaves mm, but in we'll start with the case when morphism is just a point uh, so x a projective variety uh, and f a coherent sheaf not quasi coherent but coherent now so th th that finiteness yeah for finite legendary use uh, and um, first we claim that the cohomology groups of uh, X with coefficients in F uh, are just finite dimensional vector spaces. So dimension of this uh, is less than infinity. Uh, and uh, second, mm, uh, we claim that the higher cohomology mm, Higher than zero, which with coefficients in uh, the sufficiently twisted uh, sheaf uh, vanishes uh, for mm, big enough twist. Okay, so recall that this means F tensor over OX, um, OX of n uh, and uh, what is x of n we we say that x is a projective projective variety so there's an embedding from it's it's given uh, as embedded into some big projective space uh, okay and now this big projective space carries its own uh invertible sheaf o p k of one or of n uh, and uh, now you just restrict it to x mm. So, oops, sorry. So, OX of N, that by definition is the restriction of O decay uh, of N. Uh, okay, so th that's the theory we're going to prove, but uh, I'm afraid uh, I cannot prove it in just one minute. So, maybe let's. Uh, uh, move it to the next time. I will start with, from it next time, and it, it, it's not, not not difficult and not not long. Uh, and then then we'll prove its relative version, and then go, go on to consider uh, some more advanced uh, theorems about the higher direct images and the projective morphism. Okay, so thank you for today. Uh, uh, if there are no questions, I'm saving. Uh, I have a question. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Could you please uh, elaborate on uh, the relative ser mm, ser duality yes. that was uh, the start? In the very beginning. At the very beginning. Yes. Yes. So uh -huh. uh, how it is related with uh, the ordinary ser duality? Uh, uh, well, just um, uh, the uh, relative ser duality is a statement about uh, a, a projective morphism. Uh, yeah. From one variety variety X to another variety Y, uh, and the coherent sheaf on on X. Uh, yeah. Then it says something about direct images. 
maybe we, uh, should, we consider a more recent to a point or, or something. Yes, in, in case y is a point, uh, it is just the usual set duality. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Okay. And also, you asked us to um, to think about what we uh, what are yes uh, yes yes the wishes what is yes. complex and uh, maybe uh, we can discuss et etal topology and etal cohomology uh, and related stuff. Uh, 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 well, um, mm, but uh, well, how to say? I can just um, re repeat the definition of etal morphism, uh, which we already mentioned, uh, and I, I can uh, uh, give some introduction to Grothendieck topologies in general, in particular to uh, uh, etal topology. Uh, but then, if you want to actually uh, compute etal cohomology of constructible sheaves uh, over finite characteristic fields uh, and uh, use it for something like uh, vague conjectures, uh, then uh, it needs a separate course, like an, another semester, something like this. And that, that was actually given by uh, Vadim Vologodsky a couple of years ago. Uh, or, or, or you can uh, learn it. Uh, now there are many, many uh, very good expositions, uh, starting from the, the Delin exposition in SJA four and a half. Uh, uh, so, so it's well, it's really really possible to just read it there. Okay. But it's it's a big theory. I mean, it took uh, Grothendieck and his seminar uh, two years to develop it. Mm, so so yeah, I I cannot cover it in in just the remaining time in April and May. Mm -hmm. Извините, пожалуйста, а yes. можете, пожалуйста, напомните. Как вот устанавливался вот этот изоморфизм внешнего произведения пучков дифференциалов на проективном пространстве с создвинутым структурным пучком? I don't get you. Uh, ну, то есть мы писали лямбда n омега равно o от минус n минус 1. Oh, вот yes, yes. Uh -huh. uh, but, um... Well, it's just a particular case. Uh, pro projective space uh, is a particular case of uh, Grassmannian, right? It's the, the simplest Grassmannian. And uh -huh. then we have uh, uh, an exercise about uh, the transit or cotangent bundle of any Grassmannian at all, right? It was uh, the tensor product of two things. Uh, like uh, it was a home, so say uh, the cotangent bundle, uh, it was a home from the uh, universal quotient bundle to the universal sub bundle, right? Uh, and then just take the determinant of this and you get. Спасибо. Welcome. So, any other questions? Bye bye. So, then I'm uh, saving notes. I'm stopping the recording. Uh, where is it here?